My name is Julia Lafranc, and I will be happy to guide you in our two hours journey in search of more democracy and see through with the help of cyberspace as the moderator of this lab. However, in my daily life, I work at the very transparent building next door, for I am a judge of the European Court of Human Rights, elected in respect of Estonia. As you know, the European Court of Human Rights is called the Conscious of Europe. Together with the Council of Europe, it is in a way a watchdog for democracy and human rights for the entire European continent with more than 800 million people and in some cases, even on a global scale. Although the basic principle of democracy has remained unchanged throughout the almost 65 years of Council of Europe's existence, the practice of democracy is evolving and changing with developments in the society and in technology. This is why we need to understand this evolution. And if needed, we also need to keep up with it if necessary, setting new standards and requirements to ensure the quality of democracy. On the one hand, there is this unfortunate decline uh, in trend towards uh, a decline in democratic participation in Europe, which is often viewed as a symptom of somehow detachment between citizens and state institutions. However, on the other hand, and we will listen about it today, there are new communication technologies, such as internet, the social media and networks, as well as actually the entire digital revolution itself, that are affecting every area of life and have also an impact on established democratic structures. They bring together with economic globalization, with it new experiments and innovative initiatives in the field of democracy and represent a significant change in the way democracy works and in which people relate and reconnect, hopefully, to public institutions, up to enabling citizens themselves to take over decision-making in some areas. The objective of this forum is to develop a sophisticated and at the same time critical understanding of these opportunities, new challenges, but also perhaps risks that are associated with the evolution of this new phenomena, which is called e-democracy, online democracy, and defined as enhancement of democracy, democratic institutions, and democratic process by means of information and communication technology. This e-democracy has many different sides and involves, for example, e-parliament, e-legislation, e-election, e-referendum, e-initiative, e-petitioning, e-consultation, and so on. In my own country of origin in Estonia, encouraging and supporting the digital connections for people are preserved as self-evident tasks of state authorities. A digital ED card system, an impressive e-government which has become model for many other countries are only few examples. And in 2005, for the first time in the world, the local elections in Estonia were casted on an electronic vote. And since then, all elections are held with the official possibility to vote online. Besides, programs enable people to participate in legislative proposals on internet or to allow them at least to follow closely government and parliament activity in implementing of executive policies are proposed. Although most of the time, the ideas of people as such are usually merely seen as recommendations, and the final decision, however, rests with elected officials, it still gives at least some discussion possibilities and gives an impression that the people are also involved in making decisions. Around 400 municipal and state services in Estonia are made available on internet, which means that, for instance, 71% of Estonian citizens fill their tax declarations online. Besides, the declaration of economic interest of all civil servants are publicly available to all interested people on internet for everybody. And it all started in 1996 when the then Estonian president made a bold decision and launched the four-year state program Tiger's Jump to computerize and internetize all of the country's schools. 
and created in this way a completely new generation of what we know today, netizens. So much successes in these initiatives, but as we know also much problems like cyber attacks, for instance, cyber crime, and uh, unlawful activities on internet, including molesting and hate speech, issues of data protection, the protection of on the one hand private life and on the other hand the freedom of expression. The Belgian anthropologist Paul Jorion describes the tension between these two confronted groups. He calls it a digital war. And he says on one side you have a proportion of population that is open, and on the other side a population that is scared on the prospect of too much openness. And in that sense, we have the issue today to ask the following questions following our presentations. Can we find a balance between the quest for transparency of democratic institutions and the respect of the rule of law, as well as the rights and safety of individuals which may be exposed, for example, by whistleblower platforms? And therefore, I am happy to introduce you now the presentations. But let me first say that um, we have also uh, he, with us our rapporteur, because the results and conclusions of this lab will be presented to all forum participants at the plenary session, and they will be included in the forum final report. And for our lab, kindly Mrs. Ellen Behrens, ambassador, uh, extraordinary and plenipotentiary permanent representative of the Netherlands to the Council of Europe has agreed to take this challenging task because she has been told to summarize our talks in three to four minutes this afternoon. May I add that uh, Ambassador Behrens is a career diplomat who started her profession at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in the Netherlands after having obtained her doctorate in modern history and studied a year in Moscow University because while she was growing up in the, during the Cold War, she was curious to see the other side of the wall and the other side of the uh, Iron Curtain. Unfortunately for me, who I was also interested in that, the curtain ended with the, the Berlin Gates in East Germany seeing only the reflection of West Germany. But this was these times, today we live another times, we are all here together in Europe, and Mrs. Behrens has ever since held positions in Moscow, Hanoi, Cape Town, and Kiev, and as an ambassador also to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Je suis également très fière de vous présenter Monsieur Aurélien Cantou, qui sera notre dessinateur aujourd'hui. Les dessins vont être affichés pendant la session plénière, Et nous sommes très curieuses de savoir comment on est reflété dans euh, ces travaux de M. Cantou. We are also assisted by volunteer Evitrine Odrats from the Council of Europe and by note taker Mrs. Gorana Bogancheva. So now I welcome the first speaker, Mr. Adam Senft, MA in Political Science from the University of Toronto. He is a researcher at the Citizen Lab of the same university, and his primary research focus is online freedom of expression and information controls on the other side. He has written about internet filtering and censorship of web and pointed rightly to the multidisciplinary challenges of studying information controls, the technical, social, political, legal, economic, and other aspects. Mr. Senft has been a coordinator on the OpenNet Initiative project since 2011. So I'm sure his presentation about the OpenNet Initiative will be as sharp and as spicy as his name. You have the floor. Thank you very much. <laughs> 